And hello to everyone. So my name is Greg Ganczewski, and uh, today I would like to talk to you about sustainable packaging. What is sustainable packaging? Can we measure sustainable packaging? How to measure sustainable packaging? So as Andrei uh, told, I came to you from Poland, from Cobro Packaging Research Institute, which is a research institute dating back to 1973. Uh, and we have a number of laboratories, each connected to packaging. So we have um, a laboratory for packaging materials and consumer packaging testing, which is a laboratory mainly connected to primary and secondary packaging. But we also have a laboratory for transport packaging testing. It's especially interesting because we just destroy packaging there. That's how you test transport packaging. You just, you just destroy it. Um, and we also have packaging and environment department. I'm from, and um, in this department, we uh, look at how uh, uh, the environment impacts on the packaging, but also how the packaging impacts uh, the environment. So we look at those. Uh, uh, also, we have a certification center, standardization department, and we also issue our own uh, uh, magazine called Packaging Spectrum. And we are members of a number of organizations, including European Bioplastics, who was present yesterday and uh, had a, uh, a representative from there, had a really interesting presentation. So my presentation is going to be um, um, divided into three parts. So first of all, uh, we will discuss very quickly what is uh, exactly sustainable development. Uh, then I will try to answer the question, can we measure it? And then how can we measure it and what should we look for um, when it comes to sustainability, especially from the perspective of packaging? Because we talked about sustainability a lot throughout our um, uh, two days, yesterday and, and, and today as well. Uh, but uh, we haven't really spoken about what to do with packaging specifically. So how to look at sustainability uh, from the packaging perspective. So what is sustainable development? So this is the most uh, traditional and, and most well-known definition, uh, which was actually made for uh, a Brundtland report for the World Commission on Environment Development in 1992. And this definition states that uh, sustainable development is a development that needs uh, that meets the needs of the present without compromising the uh, ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So, in essence, uh, it's more or less a philosophy. It's a very logical philosophy. It's a philosophy which is uh, connected to, um, to, to survival of our species in one way or another, because like um, uh, one of the great uh, purposes of our life is, of course, to uh, have children and to have uh, and and to basically make it possible for our children to live and to have a very good life so that's what sustainable development in essence is really about so in other words it even says here in the definition it's ensuring that today's growth does not jeopardize the growth possibilities for future generations so it's a long-term thinking uh, strategy it's 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 like a long-term thinking uh, philosophy and it's like traditionally uh, comprises of three different elements which we also spoke about Yesterday, so we have this economic, social, and environmental elements, and they have to be considered in equal measure. Um, we have other definitions of sustainability, of course, but they are all very, very similar. They basically uh, stay the same, but in some different words. So from ISO uh, uh, 26,000, uh, uh, we have a definition that sustainable development is about integrating goals of high quality of life, health, and prosperity with social justice and maintaining the earth capacity to support life in all its diversity. So once again, we have social, economic, and environmental goals. Um, and very importantly, they have to be uh, interdependent, but mutually reinforcing. And we can show it by this very simple wind graph that we have like those three different elements, environmental, social, and economic. And only when they all match and meet together, we can speak about sustainability and we can tell about uh, that something is sustainable. Um, what does it mean for business? Uh, because like philosophy is a philosophy, but when we want to apply it, then we need to think about it a little bit differently. So uh, for business, very easily, we have to take into consideration widely understood economic, environmental, and social issues in daily and long-term operations of our company. So uh, once again, because sustainability and sustainable development is a long-term uh, Philosophy, actually, according to, uh, to uh, economy, uh, like the concept of sustainable development takes at least six generations. So it's a very long term uh, concept, but also we have to look at the present. 
What does it mean with, with packaging? In packaging, it means that we have to be responsible for introduction of the packaging from the perspective of those three issues in a whole life cycle of our packaging, but also of our packed product. So even though we look at only the packaging, the product that the packaging uh, is, is, is wrapping, is packing, uh, also uh, has got some uh, interesting uh, interactions that will be relevant from the perspective of sustainability. Um, so once more, sustainable development has to be present in all life cycle stages, starting from production, delivery chains, uh, demand, processing, packaging, distribution, usage. But at the same time, sustainable products should match up or exceed conventional products by functional and quality properties, fulfill today's environmental protection standards, but also contribute to uh, waste management system. Everything we uh, also discussed. So the most important question probably is, okay, so this is all very beautiful. This is all very, very idealistic and very nice, but how can we actually assess sustainability? How can we say whether something is sustainable or not? You, how can I say if this, if, if this thing that I'm holding here is sustainable? How can I say if this is sustainable? And unfortunately, uh, the answer is, is that if we want to do it objectively, if we want to have like this you know, very concrete and uh, uh, scientific method, uh, and we want to follow internationally recognized standard, we can't. We can't do it, at least not yet. Um, and even uh, ISO um, 14021 about self-declared environmental claims, it clearly prohibits uh, making any self-declared sustainability claims. So it says that we cannot say that our company or our product is sustainable. It still doesn't uh, stop like different companies from trying. So different corporations try to have their own um, uh, ways of uh, looking at sustainability and you can even see it here that uh, for standards and poor 500 companies which are like the five, uh, 500 largest companies in the United States uh, the sustainability reporting that those companies did r since 2011 rose more than 60 percent so people are still trying to do it somehow uh, even though from the point of view of, of like methodology and uh, uh, when they would try to do it in a scientific way, they cannot really do it. They still try to do it. So we have like many different frameworks. We have sustainability uh, reporting tools. Uh, and for that, we have frameworks, which are like a set of principles or guidelines, uh, for example, uh, Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, and those pr guidelines, they just assist companies in the, uh, the sustainability disclosure efforts. We, of course, have different standards, like, like for this whole uh, ISO uh, 14000 series. And we have different ratings and uh, indices, like which are third party reporting of a company's sustainability performance. So we have FTSE for good, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, etc. cetera. Um, but there are many problems with those, uh, uh, with those tools. And the main problem is that there's just too many tools to choose from. So if you want to assess, somehow assess sustainability, uh, we have so many tools to choose from that this is like the first major obstacle. Then there's like a lack of standardization, the criteria, terminology and methodology. So different uh, ways of, of, of reporting and of looking at sustainability speak different language. And if we did it with one uh, method and then someone else did it with another one, we may not necessarily not even agree with each other. We may not necessarily uh, understand each other. Uh, there's a different, different tools focus on different sustainability aspects. As you remember, we have like three main sustainability aspects, which is uh, environment, society, and the economy. Some of those tools, they only, for instance, look at economic uh, uh, part of sustainability or just on the social part of sustainability. Uh, but if we want to really look at sustainability, we have to look at all of those elements. And that's why it's still impossible to do it. It's difficult to compare them on ben and benchmark them together. Uh, also, different tools focus on different time frames. So some tools look at the past, some look at the present, some look at the future. Uh, different tools also require different data. And one of the worst is that, of course, there's a natural inclination towards a tool that puts a company in the best possible light. Meaning that uh, many companies, unfortunately, use um, uh, their sustainability reporting as greenwashing, which is like this black PR uh, type of a marketing strategy. However, the biggest problem of it, of it all is, is one that I said, that we have like no unified theory. So we know more or less what it means uh, to be sustainable from the point of view of environment, from the point of view of society, and from the point of view of uh, economy. But 
we are missing this unified theory here. So very similarly to, uh, to, to particle physics and to actually the uh, great theory of everything, we know we have those four, four forces, but we don't know how they, how they interact. No one has even uh, found out yet uh, uh, how the universe works, really. And it's same here. Uh, we have like lots of different, uh, uh, really in interesting frameworks, but we have no unified theory. However, uh, scientists from, from all of different uh, um, uh, domains are, are working very, uh, uh, very hard on this, and hopefully within uh, a couple of years we will have some sort of a more um, concrete and, and detailed methodology that will be uh, that will allow us to state uh, in a scientific way and using scientific methods whether something is sustainable or not. Um, so right now uh, for the remainder of the presentation uh, because I cannot really say whether something is sustainable or not I will mainly focus on those three different elements and tell you uh, how we can look at sustainability from a point of view of environment, from a point of view of society and from the point of view of economy. And I will not go into the details of, of all of those uh, mm, uh, sometimes very uh, difficult to understand tools, I will try to use common sense. Because like um, sustain sustainability and sustainable development is such an uh, idealistic and easy to understand uh, and um, philosophical term uh, and logical term as well, we can use common sense to think about how to do, how to be sustainable, especially uh, in the domain of uh, packaging. Uh, so I will be, of, of course, talking about tools as well, but also about some co common sense techniques on how to be sustainable when producing packaging. So uh, I will start from, from, from environment, and I will start in here by actually a tool that we have, and it's a very well-developed tool called LCA Lifecycle Assessment. So it's probably the most popular sustainability and environmental assessment tool, and we can use it to assess everything provided that we have data. So we can, we can assess our products, we can assess our processes, we can assess um, our companies, we can even assess whole economies, we can even assess whole planet, but we need to have a data to do it, of course. Uh, its main goal is to assess uh, aspects of environmental impacts in a whole life cycle of selected subject matter. Uh, so, of course, we can use it for, for packaging, uh, and um, uh, uh, packaging is actually a very... Uh, um, very good uh, subject matter for, for uh, LCA, uh, mainly because it's very easy to compare uh, the different packaging solutions. So we compare different packaging types for the same group of products. So for instance, we compare glass bottle with plastic bottle with uh, uh, composite uh, packaging bottle. Um, yeah, so uh, when we are looking at LCA in packaging, we also look at multi-usability of packaging and how the packaging is or can be disposed. We also look at infrastructure. Uh, so, in short, life cycle assessment uh, can be like summarized that we are looking at a very detailed biography and family tree of our product throughout, uh, throughout its life. And we look at what we have taken from the environment and what we are leaving behind in form of emissions, which can be to air, to water, and to... Uh, um, and to ground the soil. Mm. However, we have a problem here, of course, because we are trying to model a very complex reality. So when we are doing life cycle assessment, we have to, we, we try to show how reality works in a way. So it used to model a very complex reality, but each model simplifies the reality. So we have like this contradiction here that simplification destroys reality, uh, distorts reality. So our main goal when we are doing LCA is to minimize this distortion and to try to be as objective as possible. Of course, it's not going to be ever possible because so much uh, of, uh, of our assessment depends uh, on our uh, choices, which are always uh, subjective. But uh, we need to try to minimize this distortion and try to be as objective as possible, given the data and, and the time and the money that we have to do uh, this um, LCA. So LCA consists of like goal and scope definition, uh, inventory assessment, where we collect uh, this inventory data, impact assessment, where we try to interpret this data, and then interpretation of like everything we had. And you can see that uh, it's not like a step-by-step -step process. You have like arrows going everywhere, meaning that it's an iterative process. So in order to be as objective as possible, uh, we always need to need, uh, 
to take step back. So uh, we always need to think how to fine tune uh, our, our assessment so that it's going to be uh, as objective as possible. For packaging, uh, packaging lifecycle usually looks like that, that we have like a feedstock uh, uh, resources and feedstock materials here. Then we do packaging materials, then we have packaging production, then we have separate life cycle of a goods production, which comes together in packaging and in packing and it's goods distribution. And then we have recovery and landfill of packaging waste and recovery and landfill of goods waste. And of course we have all of those subverting processes like transport in between. So uh, packaging uh, life cycle assessment is interesting in this way uh, that we have like, that we also have to look at goods production. So in general, uh, that's what life cycle assessment is about. We look at full life cycle uh, of, of our product and we look at uh, different environmental impacts that our packaging has throughout uh, its life cycle and then we try to interpret it. So that's one way of looking at sustainability but just remember from the environmental point of view. We can use LCA uh, to um, look at uh, social impacts as well although it's still in development it's called the social life cycle assessment and uh, we can use it to uh, for, for, for economic uh, assessment as well which is called life cycle costing and we've seen some examples of that uh, yesterday but this is still in, in development the one for environment is very well established and it's even standardized so we have a standard for, for, for LCA however just doing LCA is not uh, assessing sustainability because in order to assess sustainability we need to look at those three different elements. So what else can we do for, for uh, environment and this is just using logic and common sense. We have to uh, use our uh, materials responsibly so according to sustainable development policy it is recommended to just try to use less material in product application and also use renewable resources whenever possible. Uh, also, we have something called uh, carbon footprint that will help us to, uh, to um, that's also like a good indicator and we also spoke about it uh, yesterday. Actually, carbon footprint, when you do an LCA and when you do a full LCA, depending on the method you've chosen, but in most of the like, more complete methods, carbon footprint is already included in, in the LCA. Uh, and uh, why to do carbon footprint from, from perspective of, um, of sustainability? Uh, just like a little background, this is a um, model created by Professor uh, uh, Ramani Narayan uh, and he basically distinguished that in our, on our planet we have two types of carbon. That's like his distinction. We have like a, something called the new carbon, which is like uh, biomass agriculture, basically everything that is living right now. And we have old carbon, which are fossil resources, oil, gases, uh, like basically dead dinosaurs. Uh, and we use chemical industry to make from those fossil resources, polymers, chemical substances and fuels. And then we use them within like one to ten years. They go to the atmosphere or they go somewhere else in the form of CO2. Uh, and then they're caught by this new carbon and it takes really long time to change them into old carbon again. So from a perspective of sustainability, this, this here doesn't make sense. And we can actually right now with, with like a new innovations that we have, we can actually from, uh, go from new carbon by using biochemical industry to polymers, chemicals, substances and fuels. So we can break this cycle and make it sustainable uh, in this way and carbon footprint is one way of uh, like, you know, promoting this idea. So it's not necessarily about just like you know, climate change, it's about like resources that we have as well. Uh, yeah, what, what else can we do from a perspective of the world? Of course, like meeting of higher requirements than set by current law. So legislation and there are many non-obligatory environmental certifications for packaging. So we can certify our packaging when our packaging is bio-based uh, so, so from renewable resources. Uh, whether it's compostable, we can also do it. We have like different environmental product declarations, product environmental footprints, uh, and we can use them. Uh, and it makes us closer to being sustainable. Uh, moving on to social one. Uh, that's like a very often omitted uh, um, part of sustainability, but it's, it's very important. Fulfilling customers' ex expectations. I mean, uh, if we have a brilliant, absolutely brilliant material, brilliant packaging that's really good from the perspective of environment, uh, its uh, uh, life cycle assessment is great, uh, even if it's very cheap, but imagine it's ugly or it smells 
and people simply don't want to use it. They don't accept it. They don't like it. It's not going to be sustainable. We just wasted resources and wasted money to do something that no one is going to buy. So from a social perspective, uh, yeah, race for sustainability should not reduce aspects that are up, up, uh, appealing from the uh, point of view of end customers. So we should offer attractive look, high usage comfort, ergonomic shape, durability, all of those aspects of packaging uh, uh, that are important from the perspective of marketing. Uh, again, we discussed that very important waste collection system and recycling availability. So whenever we introduce like a new uh, product to the market, we should consider whether there are recycling methods av uh, available in the region where we are introducing this, th this project. So uh, this product. So again, we have something which is brilliant from the point of view of environment, brilliant from economic point of view. People like it, but they don't know what to do with it after it's becoming a waste or uh, whatever they do, uh, it ends up in a landfill. So, once more, not sustainable. Something that Andre talked about and something that's very at the very core of a Biocompact C project. Um, for that to work, we need to have a working recycling system. And the recycling system is com comprises of those like elements. We have like this uh, organizational element. So, we need to have a collection network. Knowledge and education, very important. We also need to have instruments, legislative and economic, uh, for companies. And of course, identification in form of certification and labels. People need to know what to do with uh, new packaging materials. But also, we need to have this technological uh, sphere, which is end-of-life technologies, and of course, infrastructure. And that depends on the region, that depends on the country. Uh, again, from a social point of view, knowledge, like customer knowledge and education level. Very, very important. Uh, it can be done by state, it can be done by companies, but it's very important that people will actually know what is sustainability and what pro which products are sustainable and uh, what does it mean for a packaging to be sustainable and what to do with packaging for it to actually be sustainable after it becomes a waste. And of course, legal uh, issues from a point of view of social sustainability are very important as well. Uh, yeah, from a, a social and economic point of view, we already discussed it as well, uh, very easily omitted. It's just like demand of materials, supply and demand. We just need to look at economy. So just take, take interest and take care of like a basic economic uh, forces. Uh, we can do life cycle costing evaluation. Uh, and uh, yeah, we had some examples yesterday from, from Professor Adriana. She showed us very nicely how we can uh, look at sustainability from this financial point of view, and that's what we can do for assessing economic sustainability. But also, of course, economically supported material choice. So our material sources should be chosen by market analysis, risk analysis and feasibility studies, and producers and suppliers portfolio analysis and competition analysis. So uh, I think we discussed it in great length in yesterday's discussion. Uh, so. That's it. As, la, as a conclusion, I would like to give you uh, some pointers from a uh, sustainable packaging coalition, which is this association uh, that deals in, uh, that promotes uh, sustainable production of packaging. Uh, they made the list of recommendations, and according to them, sustainable packaging is beneficial, sell, uh, safe, healthy for individual and communities, meets market criteria for both performance and costs, is sourced, manufactured, transport, and recycled using renewable energy, is manufactured using clean production technologies and best practices made from materials healthy in all probable end-of-life scenarios, physically designed to optimize material energy and effectively recovered and utilized in biological and or industrial closed loop cycles. So I think that's like a very good uh, summary of what sustainable packaging should be. And I hope that uh, my presentation was interesting and it showed you that sustainability is not only uh, you know, some corporate buzzwords, uh, and some very difficult to use models. Uh, it is a very uh, common sense and logical philosophy that we can all use to our lives and we can use uh, for um, when thinking about producing packaging. So thank you very much. And if you are interested. Uh,